I was just planing down this offcut to turn into earrings actually. Check out my KB wooden earrings um, on my website. I'll link to it down below. But I noticed some really cool figuring in the top of this board. And uh, I think I can't just cut this up. I'm gonna have to turn it into something a little special. So I'll show you what I make. And welcome in folks. The reason why I'm calling this one a kind of build is because this has a live edge and I'm gonna do as little as possible to this live edge. I think that's one of the charms of the live edge is to leave it as natural as you can. I'm just gonna clean it up, remove any of the excess bark in these dark parts where the bark connects in with the sapwood. I just think it makes it look a little bit nicer to get rid of that make it ni nice and consistent especially since part of this is not going to have a live edge I'm going to have to round it out and I'm going to try to keep these chainsaw marks and that's because this wood came from my client's family home his tree this black walnut tree he remembers playing on climbing and and growing up with and unfortunately it fell quite a few years ago in a storm they uh, had it milled, had it stored away in a barn, and it's been sitting there ever since for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And now it's time for me to build something with it. So I'm actually making some floating shelves for their house. I'm going to put them up on the wall soon. I'm not uh, videoing that, but that's okay. I don't think it's much of a different process, honestly, than this. It's uh, just a lot of cleaning up and sanding. The only difference is I am going to cut a semicircle on this. And the reason for that is the chatoyancy that's causing the figuring in this, and I'll get into chatoyancy here in a second, is um, causing this kind of fanning look to it that reminds me of a seashell. So the bottom is going to be more of a curved look, the seashell, and the top with that live edge has that scalloped sort of look of the seashell. So if you agree, then leave me a comment and start it with seashell down below. Tell me what you think about seashells. But I'm going to go over to the bandsaw now and start cutting this thing out. And after that's expertly cut on the outside of my line, I just bring it over to the table saw, oddly enough. And no, I'm not going to freehand cut this on the table saw. This is a 10 inch sanding disc that I install into my table saw and it works wonders. I don't really have a space in my small shop for a big sanding disc like this. So when I need it, I just hook it up to the table saw and I get to sanding away. And if you're worried about the arbor or the, the mounts on the motor or anything, the stress that this is causing, um, don't be too worried about it. This is a job site table saw. It can handle anything, but also if it breaks, it was like 300 bucks and I honestly really need a new table saw. So I'm okay with that. And here's a quick look at that chatoyancy that I was talking about earlier. You see how there's a little bit of a shimmer and it almost looks like it's three dimensional instead of two dimensional. Well, that's exactly the definition of chatoyancy. It's a two dimensional object with properties that make it look three dimensional. And the way this is actually created in the wood, all it is is just grain going across itself. So that's end grain coming through and giving a darker look. And then there's face grain running alongside of that, which pushes back more light. And so the end grain will absorb more, the face grain will will bounce it back. And it gives a shimmering effect as the light changes and as you move the piece around. So pretty cool. Um, this is a trunk or from the crotch of the tree, and that's where you get the um, the tree is growing across itself to support the two major limbs that are coming off of the trunk um, and all that weight up there. So if you want to read more about that, I have a blog post on that very topic, and I will link it down below. But now you can see me moving on to sanding, and specifically a lot of hand sanding. And uh, I... I really believe in small pieces like this, it's extremely important to get all of the details right. So I'm meticulously hand sanding all of the live edge on this, getting a hand cramp along the way. Uh, that's okay. I'll shake it off and keep on going. This took me about half an hour, but um, I think it really paid off in the end to remove any and all scratches 
and really make it shine. And you'll see that in the final product. And speaking of product, this is a little serving platter or a trivet. I don't know exactly how the client will use this. This is a, this is a surprise for them. I'm uh, making it just as a little freebie um, to show my appreciation for their order on the floating shelves that I mentioned that I'm making for them. And because this may be holding food at some point in its life, I want to make sure to use a food safe finish. So I'm starting off with some mineral oil and just getting a nice base coat to soak in and really permeate the wood. And that's really where the chatoyancy seed pops on this. You can see how amazing this looks after just a little bit of oil on the board. And then I'm gonna follow it back up with a little bit of my homemade wood conditioner available on my website, keatonbuyerwoodworking.com. Um, you get it in one of those fancy little tins. I have a big batch of it that I made that I keep in a peanut butter jar. And this is the application process. So you just coat the entire surface, get it on there, and make sure to buff it in all over the place. And what I make this from is 100% natural Northwest beeswax and a little bit of food grade mineral oil and a special secret four to one ratio. And after about 30 minutes of dry time, just to let that uh, beeswax harden up, I buff off any of the excess and this is ready to go for the big reveal.